Good morning. How did the powers that be frame their murder of Jesus on the cross to suit their own ends? Today we're looking at Mark 15, verses 21 to 28. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right hand and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. The murder of Jesus was a significant local event. I mean, he had been throughout all of the land of Israel, and he was, a, he was known. This was a notable thing. And so it's interesting then to begin to look here and see how the powers that be how they package the death of Jesus to meet their own purposes. So first of all, they give Jesus the title, King of the Jews. And the, the, the priests, the priests hated that. But Pilate made it stick. He made sure that they kept it on there. So they made him, he's not, he's not a universal king. He doesn't come to die for all mankind. He's just King of the Jews. And we know how the Romans and the Jews felt about each other. It, it was not a mutual lovey-dovey zone. So he's the King of the Jews. It's just a local thing. So there he is. He's killed with two other uh, petty criminals. This is just another petty criminal being killed. And that's, that's the way uh, they can portray it. In a sense, this was a vehicle to carry out the political ends of both church and state because the, the religious leaders want him dead and the state doesn't mind if he's killed anyway. So there you have it. So this looks like the triumph of the state. But it's not the triumph of the state. No, it's not going to be that. But that's what it kind of looks like. It was instigated by religious leaders who were envious of Jesus and of his influence. They were fearful of losing their power and their status, the status of their fake church, because it, by this point, that's all it really was. It was a fake church. It wasn't, they had emptied it of all of its meaning, and God was done with it because they were already done with it. They had abandoned God and replaced it, that true religion with a, a tissue of, of works and rituals. And, and uh, so they wanted to get rid of Jesus, get him out of the way. So that's what's going to happen. How will they deal with it, though, when he rises from the dead? Yeah, I explained that one, you guys. But anyway, God is, is going to rise from the dead, but we're still coming to that. Let's pray together. Your Father in heaven, as we're thinking about the way the, the powers that be in the time of Jesus uh, took his death and tried to spin it their way, tried to portray uh, that it was not an important thing, it was just another execution among many, and so forth. Uh, Lord, we know that, in fact, this, this is the foundation stone of all autonomy and goodness in the universe. This, this, is, the, this is it. So this was uh, quite a bit completely different from its represented. Today in our day, we hear many things and we're told many things, but those many things are often skewed. Help us, Lord, to remember to latch on to the real story. Jesus dies on the cross to give us a gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Help us to be uh, tracking with that and make, and make sure that we know that, indeed, this is the truth. This is the center of you're demonstrating your love for us. Watch over us, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, the one source of true news about, about, about everything is the Bible. This is the true news about salvation through Jesus Christ. And help us to remember that. Help us to remember that. This, this is the way to begin our day. This is the way that we can take courage when all the crazy things seem to be happening around us and the world is getting stranger by the, by the hour, we have God's truth and we can stake our eternal life on this gift of salvation through Jesus recorded for us faithfully and infallibly in the Bible. God be with you today as you walk out into your day knowing that Jesus wants you in his kingdom. God be with you.